Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, as you see here I have a new patient on the workbench, uh, again a tube radio. Um, this is a Telefunken Operette 6, um, so it's a tube radio from mid of the 50s, 1955-1956. So the 6 in the in the name indicates like the uh, the model year, uh, so 1956. And I think the radio should, would be have would have been produced in 1955. Um, as you see, um, it's not in great condition uh, cosmetically. It's uh, pretty bad, but I'll uh, come back to that later. So we'll have uh, quite a bit of a challenge, I think, to restore this one. Um, so the operette was more or less a mid-range uh, radio from Telefunken at the time. Um, so I believe they had five models. So from, from small to big, it was uh, the Jubilate, I think, was the, the, the smallest one. And then you had the, um, the Gavotte, then the Operette, right in the middle of the range, and then the Concertino, I believe, and then the Opus. So this is a bit of a mid-range device. Let me just show you here quickly what are start the functionality, but uh, but it's it's really basic. So simply here we just have the volume control. Then here in the piano keys the off switch, the pickup input, long wave, medium wave, short wave, and FM. And then you have here two uh, tuning dials: one for the bass, one for the treble. And then here you have uh, the two separate tuning knobs, one for FM and one for AM. So I believe this is the FM one. Yeah, that's FM and this is uh, AM. So this also means that uh, since you have two separate knobs, there is no uh, clutch mechanism inside that can break. <laughs> if you saw my uh, previous tube radio restoration of the Grundig 5195, then yeah, I still have a headache from this clutch mechanism that uh, was not working uh, in that radio. And in the meantime, it broke down again in that radio. So, um, yeah, so that, that should simplify stuff quite a lot. Um, and then we have the magic eye here. But that's basically it in terms of functionality. So it's really, in terms of functionality, quite basic. But um, it should be, uh, it should sound quite, quite good, I think. Um, yeah, you see here the dial glass is still in nice condition. It's dirty, okay, but uh, it looks still oh, good. Um, same for the, uh, the, the, the speaker cloth here. Um, it looks to be completely undamaged. Also a bit dirty, but I don't see any real defects here at all. So that's also uh, very nice. But yeah, then the elephant in the room is basically the the cabinet, eh? so the wood of the cabinet, which is really, really bad. Um, the lacquer is almost completely gone. See, here you have still a, a bit of lacquer left, and here also some smaller spots. But um, So yeah, that needs to be completely reworked. But uh, yeah, anyway, I don't have any choice. I mean, if the radio would be like in... in, in Still pretty okay condition, you always have the dilemma, am I going to redo everything or am, ju am I just going to to touch it up? But now there is really no choice but uh, redoing everything. So should be interesting because uh, I think it's the, f it's the first time that I will be doing uh, a restoration of a cabinet. Um, a full restoration. Here on this side it's basically the same thing. So here you have still a bit more lacquer left, but yeah, it all needs to come off and see it's all flaking off uh, everywhere. So um, here on the inside, um, here you also see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but uh, here you have some woodworm um, damage. So that also needs to be um, treated and repaired. Uh, same on this side as well. So on the back here we have connectors for the antenna. So this is the internal FM dipole antenna. Here you have the uh, pickup input. Then here you have the uh, connectivity for an external speaker, I think. Yeah, and I know the transformer is uh, capable of going until 240 in this radio. 
but normally in at that time in 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 Europe here it was 220 so somebody already set it to 240 that's interesting um yeah and that's about it uh, so let's just open up the radio and see what we find uh inside so opening up is quite easy just uh loosening these screws and then you can slide out the these tabs here and then the back should come off so what is great here is that we have the original schematic here still inside that's nice let me put that aside and then on the inside yeah at first sight it looks to be quite okay um okay there is a lot of dirt well a lot i've seen worse um there is dirt and there is some spider webs oh there are some huge spider webs over there in the corner Let's see look at look at that that uh, looks quite disgusting <laughs> so um, we'll have to clean that up uh, here the the ferrite antenna is has dropped uh, or has come loose yeah that's probably because the rubbers here deteriorated uh, so that needs to be fixed um, the owner sold me the radio as uh, not working so um, yeah we'll have to see um, what is wrong with it or why it's not working um, yeah so that's the first job cleaning up here a bit getting the chassis out of the cabinet and then trying to get it working again just uh, because i think you you love to see this right <laughs> we'll take a look at this massive spider nest or web or whatever it is here in the corner <laughs> pretty disgusting <laughs> Okay, so that's already a bit more comfortable now to work on it. So uh, next step is, I think, to get the chassis out of the cabinet. Ow. Splinters everywhere. of spider webs as well yeah so you can already see now a bit better what we got here um, everything still looks quite decent the chassis here is fixed with these four screws and this one is to fix the transformer i think ah oh, that's loose stuck And I'm gonna leave that for now. It's completely stuck to the bottom. I am also going to remove the one here from the transformer. That shouldn't be an issue since the transformer is also bolted to the chassis itself. So and also this 
Okay, so the other two I'm gonna do uh, while the chassis is well, the radio is still again upright because otherwise it uh, the chassis will fall out. Okay, so magic guy first should just just be here clipped on with the spring. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. It's still an original Telefunken one. I think it would still be the original. It's an EM80. Um, no idea if it's still good. So these are the speaker wire connections on the output transformer. I'm just going to clip them off and I'm going to leave like a millimeter or so of uh, wire so that I can easily find back the coloring. <laughs> okay, I think the chassis should now be loose and now it should come out of the radio. Let's give it a go. Not stuck behind the speaker panel? No. Ah, uh, it's completely stuck because of the, the grommets are probably sticking. Yeah, right. Uh, It's completely stuck. Yeah, the grommets are completely sticking into the cabinet. So I just need to pry a bit underneath them to get them loose. But you always have to be careful because you don't want to damage the glass. It's not budging the last one. The problem is here that the transformer is in the way, so maybe if I try a shorter screwdriver. Ah, it's not. <laughs> No, yeah, it's not coming loose. Damn. Just trying a shorter screwdriver here to really be able to reach it. Ah. Okay, it's loose, but what what else is sticking then? Something else is uh, sticking here or holding it fixed, but I don't know what... Ah, okay, there it is. Oh, how do I lift this out? Here it's... Uh, this one is also not completely loose yet. No. <laughs> oh. Aha. Okay, so I managed to put the radio in my um, bracket here, so that I can work on it more easily. And now we can have a quick look at how it looks. So it's yeah, quite dirty, but dirt is not a problem, obviously. Here there is quite a bit of rust here on the screen, so we need to fix that on this, uh, this white backing board. Um, yeah, for the rest, I can't see a lot wrong at the moment. We have here the, uh, the rectifier, the selenium rectifier, that needs to be changed. Um, then here you see the filter capacitor. I think it's, there is some gunk coming out, so <laughs> that also clearly needs to be uh, changed. I don't know. Um, and then the tubes I already took out, the magic eye, but I think all of the tubes are still the original Telefunken ones. See, here you have the EL84, uh, and it, it's still an original Telefunken, and I think all of them are still original Telefunken. So these are just the original tubes um, as they shipped in the radio uh, in 1955. So that's pretty cool to see that. Um, so the, the tubes here in, the, in this radio, they are quite a standard tube set, huh? so we have uh, 
here's the ECC85, which is the, the RF amplifier and also the oscillator. Um, this is here the ECH, um, ECH81, I think, yeah. Um, that's the mixer tube. Then all the way in the back, that should be an EF89. Um, that's the IF amplifier. Then here an EABC80, um, which is the detector. And it's also used as pre-amplifier for the audio stage. And then the uh, audio amplifier EL84. So you see, it's quite a basic... Um, well, basic, it's a, it's a very common uh, tube set, right? Okay, so here you see at the bottom, it's all, I don't see a lot of um, issues at first sight. Of course, you have the paper capacitors that need to be changed. See, that's the, the bottom over there of the filter can. And uh, yeah, the goo is basically coming out. It's leaking quite badly. So that definitely needs to be changed. I don't want to try and power this up before I have at least changed this uh, filter can over here because it doesn't really look good. Uh, um. This is just... Wow! <laughs> this is really stuck. Oh my god. Nope. Oh my god. Jesus. What a puzzle this is. Ah.